just before 1990, none of the burner rates, none of the murder rates reached 100. Because we cleaned up the drugs, we cleaned up everything. After you go to jail, what happens? You lose power of the streets? Or no, no, we, no, we just left it. You just left the streets? We, we left it. We say, that's where you want? Well, we left it. And that's what's the problem now. We left it. Who's controlling it right now? Controlling what? Who's controlling the streets? It's right out now? of control. Because all the young people just come up after them who don't have the experience of the streets, who didn't have the will, the control. I mean, and, and a lot of the people who were the community leaders were, were people who were in our organization. We control the streets. So are we getting better or are we getting worse? It's getting worse every day. This place is going to explode. There is a perpetual quest for dominance. You go to sleep Friday night and the person that was dominant Friday, Saturday morning, they find him dead. And then it starts all over again and the instability starts all over again and the war for power starts all over again. Without Bakker or another strongman in power, different leaders are doing whatever is necessary to assert control over territory and contracts. The gangs have been enshrined in the consciousness of communities. The gangs play a very strategic role when it comes to the distribution of wealth in our communities. And a lot of our communities have felt neglected for a very long time from government. So they're not getting the jobs from government. They're not getting the kind of resources they want from the government. But somehow the gangs seem to be the government in our communities. And in Trinidad and Tobago, they don't call themselves gangs. They see themselves more as community groups, more as organizations, more as community leaders. These are the leaders of the community who are receiving these contracts from government to provide the kind of jobs. Um, it could be a payback for getting the votes as well. They see themselves as business organization, and that business can run from government contracts to drugs. It's whatever is the big business on the street today, and they're going to get involved in that. No business passes them by. We headed to Beatum Gardens, a neighborhood notorious for being a Rasta city stronghold, to talk to Spanish, Beatum's community leader. Some consider him a gang leader, but to a lot of people in the community, he's the only one bringing jobs and social services to the impoverished neighborhood. Spanish, so uh, where are we right now? What's this neighborhood? What's it like? 24th Street, Beatum Gardens. They used to call it Shanty Town in the early, you know. It's, it is class as ghetto, but it's, you know, it's a part of the country, and some of the people might be going through more poverty than normal. It seems like no one's really helping out here, so you're building some houses. Well, I, as much as I could do, I'm a registered contractor. I just work hard for what I want. Once I get work from the government and think I earn money, I spend it into things we could help to employ and, you know, alleviate the youths around me. You talk to some of the police and some of the, some of the uh, politicians, yes. and they point to you when they say he's a community leader, but he's a gang leader too. You think that's not fair? No, it can't be fair. I don't know gang leader. I don't order nobody children to go and kill. I don't order nobody children to go and rob or thief or kidnap or nothing of the sort. Yeah, attempt me on my life, you understand? But how many? Well, to recall, uh, about once, you know, uh, so not twice. What happened? They came for you. They they came for you in your house, or you were driving? Or no, what? driving, you know, coming out of certain places. Man, might stand up and fire shots at the vehicle I drive, you know. Was about nine or ten shots shoot up the vehicle. And that was how long ago was that? that was last year. Last year, damn. Yeah. And you got people recognize that car, so I imagine you gotta be you gotta be real careful all the time. Yeah, I was driving that, but I don't drive that. So again, I, I don't really drive one thing too long. I, but it's all because they, I name Spanish and I live in Vita. You know, somebody from our next community might see me and be done with any people. Have you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it could happen. If you're from Vita, you're not allowed in certain parts of Trinidad. If you're from Sur, you're not allowed in Vita. I mean, I'm not sure, yes. And what's going on right here? You're, you got turntables, you got speakers, you're putting yeah, on a party well, for the people? Yeah, well, I music, certain thing. Plus, as I work, I buy music, I like that. I grew up in that. Besides bringing jobs, Spanish always puts on events like soccer matches and parties to support his community. Put 
place over here, Spanish is actually building this for the people in the community. And uh, it's just a little taste of how these community leaders really take care of their own and why they have so much respect. The party was a really good time. It was clear that there was a lot of love in the community and that everyone took care of each other, almost like a big family. It was easy to forget that this neighborhood was often a war zone and that other gangs sometimes came to these parties and shot them up. Now that we were in with Spanish, we were able to meet some of the guys actually pulling the triggers in these gang wars. What do you say in Trinidad when you drink like this? Opa? Opa? No. What do you say? Cheers. Cheers? Cheers. 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 It's what we say in New York sometimes, ready? L'chaim. L'chaim. It means to life. <laughs> to life. Dreddy, why do you, um, why do you have to carry that around? Why do you feel the need you gotta carry a firearm? I don't know, not to survive, you really have to defend yourself here in the ghetto. Who are you, who are you defending yourself against? From the hills, man, the men on the hills. Let's fire shots at anybody, anybody, anybody. Anytime? Anytime, any day. No one from on this end can go on that end. And if someone from this end goes to that end, shots get fired? Yeah, yeah that's it, that's it. Done? Done, the finish here. Damn. Have you lost a lot of friends? We, we know the murder rate here yeah, is crazy. A, a, a lot, you know. The last two shots fired, 12, 12, 12 people pick up rapid fire automatic weapons. You know, the police, they're going after the young kids on the streets. The big fish, no one's going after the big fish. No, the big fish don't come, do deal direct. The big fish are what, politicians, businessmen? Them is the men. And they're the ones who are bringing the drugs in too, yeah? Them is the men who are behind the curtain. The men behind the curtain? Them hiding. Yeah. Leaving us in the front line. The police now, they owe extra money. They take money? Of course. And what about the drugs and the guns? What is that? It comes from Venezuela? Where does it come from? It comes from Venezuela, which is the politician, and them just get it in much easier. Yeah, we hear that Coast Guard, all them, they just take bribes, yes, the guns, the drugs come in. Yeah, that's how the thing run here in Trinidad now. Well, you can see about 10 years now, you know, the whole thing changed up. Everybody yeah. started to take bribe. Coast Guard, police, everybody on the dollar sign. And that's when the murder rate started going really, really high. When the action starts. Yeah. Because everybody want a piece in the cake, money changes everything. Yeah. Contracts, money. The long as you have money, well, money is power. It isn't the street guys who are making the serious money in Trinidad. Dreddy said something we kept hearing. Behind the drug trade and the gangs are what Trinidadians call the big fish. The untouchable, nameless elites who treat the country like their own narco state, buy off politicians, and foster endemic corruption that affects all levels of society. To understand the murder rate, to understand the coup, and to understand all the complexities. You must understand the games the politicians have played. Young people are seeing that sometimes our politicians doing again what they want, and they're not seeing any sort of repercussions, any sort of consequences. The reality is, is that the most powerful players who are resident in Trinidad in the illicit drug trade have then the need to purchase impunity from the state. They have to be political financiers. And that is what drives the endemic corruption of the society. When people speak of corruption in society, all they look at it's the most visible means, it's the, the lower level ones, the ones who get caught taking a bribe and things like that. The traffickers who live in Trinidad and Tobago, they wield power within the state structure to the extent that nobody in the state structure can bring them down. They are in fact untouchable. Until the authorities in Trinidad are ready to go after the big fish, it doesn't seem like much will change on the ground. Literally, 
a few thousand people have been killed in these areas. We need help. You think that some of that money that's coming from all the oil that's on the island would trickle down here. But from everything everyone's telling us, it doesn't come down here at all. No, because we don't see here as part of Trinidad. We see here as a saw, a diseased part that we wish would go away. I tell people, if your left kidney is cancerous and you ignore it, it will kill you. If you focus on the parts of your body that are healthy and you say, that left kidney is just a pain and a bother, you're going to die. And the nation is dying because we're treating a part of us as though it will go away and dry up one day.